yeah, I don't know, like the moment we got down here, I'm just getting like that, that like uneasy feeling, like the heart, the heart fluttering, like whenever we go like really sketchy, dodgy places, which this isn't because it's just a cemetery, like it's a pleasant, yeah. I'm just getting that like really. I, I mean, there's probably unmarked graves in every cemetery, but the unmarked graves that are here, considering the large amount of them came from one of the most insane asylums of the time, like these people were criminally Criminal, insane. insane, they yeah. were the worst of the worst. Yeah. And I know you could say that about a lot of the asylums around that time, but I mean, for this area, they were quite literally some of the worst of the worst peoples. Their Zoom. bodies weren't just buried here, they were reburied here. Yeah, so they, they were zoomed from the other place, buried here, completely unmarked. So you could imagine into, you know. if they got settled once and they were settled in their original grave and then boom, they were ripped out of that well, grave. Well, you know the rule of thumb as well is you don't, you don't disturb a grave. Well, that's it. It's not one grave that was disturbed, it was Multiple. like, yeah, like, I can't remember, it was hundreds of thousands, but it was, it was a lot. And these are people who already lived mess up lives. You know what I mean? So yeah, murderers. They went through like, you like, know. So like some of like the like murderers, yeah. rapists, like some of the worst stuff. And I don't know, I just, yeah, I'm just getting a real, like, like on edge, like my head like, <laughs> I don't know why. It's only when we got to this section here though, I was fine over on the path, but just this section here, it just started, like it just started getting more and more. I don't know. Well, with that said, my name's Ricky. This is Brendan. Regardless, we're at the Guna Cemetery today. Well, tonight it's about to get dark. We're going to jump into an investigation. I mean, this is one of Brisbane's, you know, notoriously haunted locations. There are a number of reported spirits who are meant to roam and haunt this cemetery who, as we just mentioned, come from the Waco Park Mental Asylum, which you guys are going to hear all the history and why these two locations are intertwined and why they're linked. Essentially, some really restless spirits here. Yeah, I mean, people have reported being scratched, bruised. Like I mean, physical been, Like this is, I'd probably say like in Queensland itself, this is probably one of the most infamous or, or dangerous, mm. I guess you could say, locations that you could go to from what's been reported. So. Well, that's it because you got to think as well, all the reportings of this place a lot of them, a lot of the reportings and a lot of the stories that people tell are physical attacks. These are spirits who are quite hands-on, who are quite physical, who are... Yeah, it's not often that you'll actually get a, a large collection of spirits who, who will physically interact, especially with people. Usually they're just lost wandering souls who... Sometimes you hear one or two yeah. stories from places, but this is like not multiple stories. Yeah, not to this scale. It's almost like everyone who's come here has had some form of a physical attack or a story of some, you know, physical interaction with some of the spirits here, but jump into the history tell you guys all about this place and then jump into an investigation once the sun goes down there are a couple of spirits in particular we'd like to reach out to and like to try to make contact with again we want to mix up the investigation we want to try to bring new things to the videos so you guys will see we're going to take a whole new approach to this investigation and i guess with that said if you guys enjoy the video throughout any time any time throughout be sure to go down drop it a like drop it a comment and if you are new here hit the big red button subscribe to the channel subscribe to etfw and with that said, let's get some B-roll, photos. Let's jump back in at night and let's get into an investigation. So, Alrighty, peace. I'm sh** and bricks. I don't know why I'm sh** and bricks at the moment. <laughs> Freaky, eh? <laughs> I am fucking terrified at the moment. I don't know why, it's just getting worse and worse, man. Welcome to the Goodness Cemetery. At a first glance, the tranquil and well-maintained grounds appear to be just like any other cemetery. However, beneath the surface lies a sinister connection and a story that is steeped in torture, violence and death. To truly understand the history of this cemetery, we must first travel just under 5 kilometers away to the nearby Walson Park Mental Asylum. Within the walls of Walson Park Mental Asylum, Patients were subjected to a range of inhumane treatments, including electroshock therapy and lobotomies. Over its 155 years in operation, more than 50,000 inmates were confined to its walls, many of them involuntarily. But how do the horrors of Walsford Park Mental Asylum come to intertwine with the grounds of Goodness Cemetery? During the 1940s, the asylum's third cemetery was exhumed over a four-year period to make way for the development of the new repatriation pavilion for the mentally unbalanced and war-affected soldiers returning from World War II. According to a newspaper clipping, over 2,800 bodies were removed. However, 
Cemetery records have only accounted for around 200 of the original 2800. These remains were then relocated to the Goodness Cemetery. In recent years, an important piece of the puzzle and the mystery of where the other 2,600 remains were buried has surfaced. Mr. Brindley, who worked as an apprentice carpenter during the 1940s and was employed by Walsted Park Mental Asylum, claimed that thousands of remains were buried in long trenches dug by former inmates somewhere within the Goodness Cemetery. Today, nestled in the back corner of the cemetery, a small memorial with tiny headstones bearing only numbers lies scattered around a large plaque that reads, in memory of all those who died at Brisbane's mental hospital and those whose final resting place is unknown. Over the years, visitors to the cemetery have reported strange paranormal phenomena. These stories seem to center around the remains of those unfortunate souls who were exhumed from the Walsford Park Mental Asylum. Reports of vicious attacks, strange noises, full body apparitions, and much more have left many with an eerie feeling when visiting the cemetery. get murdered man like this is typical weather and environment for these like full horror movies or lightning everything man oh um, there's a per what the f what there's a person what the f dude i'm getting the f out of here bro nah that's mad we were just dude. in here man that's mad dodge dude why is there some Dude, just, just with walking. no lights. I, I swear he had no shoes too as well. He had no lights, man. What the f is going on? I don't know. Bro, we've been through three times. Where did he come from? I don't know. He must have been like in the middle of the cemetery. He must have been seeing us just driving around three times. Dude, there's no there's no way. Why is there's no way you're just walking through here at night with no lights on and no shoes. Yeah, that's fing There's no way, dude. <laughs> Bro, I am... I don't know. I don't know what to say to that. We'll first reach out to any spirits that might be here with us. See if we can just make contact. Let them know who we are. Yeah. So with that said, my name's Ricky. Here with my friend Brendan. We'd just like to reach out. Take this moment to communicate with anyone who might be here with us. We understand that it's probably been a long time since you've spoken to anyone and we'd like to invite you here right now to have a conversation so if you'd like to communicate in any way shape or form you're more than welcome to interact with the environment around us feel free to make a noise interact with any of the devices around us we have two cameras set up should you feel at any time that you'd like to reveal yourself you're more than welcome to interact with these cameras walk in front of them interact with anything around us reveal yourself in any way and if you need energy if you feel weak be able to drain energy from any of these devices just like to let you know that you have absolutely nothing to fear from us we just simply want to know your story find out more about you and understand perhaps why you can't pass or why you haven't passed yet all right so this particular method that we saw is running spirit talker on two separate devices at the same time the thought process and the idea behind this is that where spirit talker can only give you one phrase or one word at a time with two devices going they might be able to somehow sync up and give us longer phrases longer responses and we're quite curious to see if we can somehow get similar responses. Just jump big as well. So, Power. I've got my spirit talker on. Yep. Let's just try to make contact with anything first. So, if there are any spirits here with us, and you'd like to communicate, Turn Brendan on. and I have a device in our hand which you're able to talk through by passing your energy into it, by speaking into it. It'll be able to give us responses and translate what you're saying from the other side. So if you have a message for us, 
or if you'd like to communicate or say anything, even just have a simple conversation, can you please talk into one of our devices? Dude, it's so creepy when it goes quiet. It's just nothing but the wind in the trees just rustling. Again, if there are any spirits here, are you able to communicate through these devices in our hands? Give us a sign. Star. Star. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? So again, my name is Ricky. This is Brendan to my right. You might not have heard us before. You might have been a little bit further away, but we're here to simply find out more about you or his. his. We're here to find out more about yourself or any spirits that are here. Are you able to let us know a little bit more about you? Are, are you saying his as in there is a male spirit here with us? We understand you might be shy. Perhaps you haven't spoken to anyone for a long time. But as I mentioned earlier, we mean absolutely Our no. settlement. Our settlement. Dude, what? Your arms are goosebumps. Are you talking about... Are you talking about where you're buried right now? Where we're sitting? Is this your settlement? Under the stars? Under the stars. We understand that there are quite a large number of bodies that were moved from... Children here. Dude, children here. <laughs> they just went down and got back up again. Are we communicating with a small child? If it was children, it could explain why they're so mischievous here. Yeah. Well, they like to act Five. Like... Dude. Well, remember as well, some of the plaques say that, like, there was a girl here that, that was very here that was a little bit old. Did you hear some kids laughing? I'm very happy. What the hell, man? Do you mean that there are five... Now. Do you mean that there are five spirits here? What are they doing? Can you see them? Yeah. Where are they walking to? Up the road. I think. I don't think they're crossing. They might be crossing. I'm going to see what the hell they're doing. Little kids. Castle. I think a family. Castle. Back to what we were saying. Are you saying. I had an injury. Dude, two of them together is weird. Are you saying there are five spirits here? Or is your number of the headstone perhaps number five? The lights. Dude, you're kidding me. The lights. These lights around us are just so we can see what's going on. Gruesome. Gruesome. Dude, I am genuinely freaked out. I'm making those noises. Behind us? Maybe. Oh yeah, I just saw a sprinkle drop. I know. It knows we're freaking out. You said you're making those noises. Are you able to let us know where you are? Or can you make more of those noises? You mentioned the lights. Has Grace. I met Is your name Grace? You're more than welcome to come closer towards us. Oh, I jumped and that sparked as well. More than welcome to 
reveal yourself in front of any of these lights. Let us know that you're here. Katie. Katie. That's two girls in Grace and Katie. Are we talking to multiple female spirits, perhaps? Multiple little girls, maybe. Multiple little girls? When they said castle, is this their castle now? Dylan. Dylan. Okay, so there's three, three names. And that's a boy. Again, we just want to have a conversation with you. We understand that this area is rumored to be quiet. Hiding in the dark. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> You don't need to hide from us. We don't. We don't. We don't mean you any harm. You can come out and talk to us, and you know, if you want, you can reveal yourself. We, we're not here to hurt you. You don't need to hide in the dark. We're not here to hurt you. You know, we just want to talk and communicate. Don't feel like you need to hide from us. If, if that's what makes you comfortable, then that's all right. But we don't want you to feel like you need to hide. Are you able to make a noise or let us know where you're hiding? What the? Elijah. Four names. Neither. Oh, maybe an answer to my question. Wait. What was your question? I asked if it's able to give us a direction of where it is or where it's hiding, and it said neither. Okay. Well, maybe it's just, you know. As Brennan said, it's perfectly fine if you're scared. You can stay where you are and continue communicating with us yeah. how you are at the moment. If that's what makes you feel comfortable, then that's okay, you know. To the last child, are you able to tell us your name? We have four at the moment. Elijah, Katie, what were your names? Dylan and Grace. Dylan and Grace. Are you able to let us know who the fifth is? Could it be? Gloria. No way, dude. <laughs> it just said Gloria. Could it be that they're hiding in the dark? Not because of us, but because they're hiding in the dark from something else. Because this great, this, this place is known to cut the story. No. Go. <laughs> <laughs> it's happened again. Because, you know, with the car, something, you know, scratching and pulling and the bruising and the scratches. Are you hiding from us or are you hiding from something else? We understand you might be scared to talk and that's completely okay. We promise we won't overstay our visit. But we'd just like to find out more about you. Likely. Maybe likely. Like as if likely. What's that device? Which one? The devices we have around us are called cameras. We understand that they it's might not Evelyn. have another name. We understand that maybe they're getting more and more comfortable. More cameras comfortable. perhaps went around during your time, but what they do is they capture what we see. They capture what Thank we see. Thank you for talking. They're getting more comfortable. The cameras capture what we see. So perhaps when you were born, they weren't around. Definitely not. Spider. No, that's a bug, dude. That's a, is it flying one? But all that these devices do is capture what it's seeing around us. If you'd like to see yourself on one of these devices, you can, you can walk in front of one. You can interact with medicine. some... Medicine. Like it needs medicine. Or maybe... Pain. They were sick and... Medicine, medicine than pain. pain. Right, yeah, off cool. two different devices. And earlier before I got, I had an injury. Are you saying you're still in pain here? Is that why you haven't moved on? And that you think perhaps medicine could you fix medicine, it? Yeah. We need power. You're more than welcome to draw power from Where the hell's, oh. this light here. We have a small light behind us, which 
You can draw as much power as you need from. You can simply interact with it and absorb as much of the energy as you can from Jim. it. Jim. Jim. I reckon, I reckon as we're talking to them, more and more are coming like out. Like more are coming out. Yeah, getting more comfortable with us. Now we want to find... If, if that thing turns off... It's, it's full, full battery. battery I'm going to freak the out. We'd like to ask a couple of questions about why you were Cancer. Also... Could be why one of them died. Maybe. We'd like to ask a couple of questions as to why you are all still here. I'll affect the lights. Concerned. I'll affect the lights. Maybe it means like it'll affect it, like, because I just asked it to interact with it yeah. and it said, like, I'll affect it. Cart. Maybe it thinks this is a cart? Or oh, the car? Maybe cart? The car like an car old car? Well, As some of them, some of them would have, like, would never have seen a car. Like, some of them 1800s. would have passed long before a car had existed. So, as I was saying, I'd like to understand why some of you haven't moved on. Where are my ashes? Oh, my God, dude. Don't trust the bad ones. Are there particular spirits here who are untrustworthy? I remember what I said. Maybe... Maybe it's not these ones that are yes. being mischievous. Maybe it's there's something else, and that's who they're hiding Where from are in the my dark. Ashes? <laughs> what I was getting to was. Hang on, were, were they were their bodies buried here? Like, it was remains. Or was it ashes? So, or it's hard to tell because it was so long ago. Some there was a gentleman who was a carpenter who went on the record to say that he made boxes the size of a femur because that was kind of the largest bone. So the boxes were about this large. So some of them were that decomposed that it was just small bits of their bones left. I wonder if some, some of them could have been cremated. cremated. Yeah, maybe. But what I was getting at was... I mean, was, to be honest, we are in a cemetery as well. We could be speaking to anyone. Well, we could be drawing spirits from anywhere. Yeah. When we think what about I, how much energy is going on here in activity, it would, you know... What I was trying to say was, is that... Whoa. Are you still here and restless because your bodies and because your graves were disturbed and moved? Push. Fall. Push and, and fall. fall? Pushed and then fell. We understand that there are people who have made reports of being pushed and who have felt physically attacked here. Are you saying that's what some of the spirits Don't do go. here? We won't go. We're, I was just getting myself comfortable on the chair. That's all. I, we, we're not going. We're not going anywhere. We'll stay here with you and keep talking and keep you company. As soon as you want us to leave, you can let us know. We're happy to stay and communicate, learn as much as we can about you. So again, is the reason that you're here because your bodies have been so disturbed? I use restless because you can't find... A peaceful rest. We understand that that must have been traumatic. The lives you lived before being... Manifesting. We understand that the lives you lived... Before you died must have been horrible. At the way called mental asylum. And that when you passed away... Your you bodies that? were given no respect. Do you hear that? No. Over there. What? Like a no. Go. Like a step and like a stick snap. Use the light here. It was like a step and then like a stick snap. It was pretty loud. Why are the dogs so unsettled here? Uh, you know? Animal. Dude, what <laughs> the hell, man? You, like, honestly, guys, you can't... This... Having two devices, it shouldn't... It shouldn't work like this. How accurate these responses are. 
I uh, and yes, what you heard was an animal, it was a dog. Are there any permission? Are there any evil spirits here? Any spirits who are known to harm people? There are a lot of stories of people being scratched, pushed, injured here by unknown forces. Are there spirits here, as you mentioned earlier, that can't be trusted? Spirits here that mean to cause harm? So you're saying that where we are now, we're safe? But maybe it's also saying there's, you know, a lot of souls here. But perhaps through other parts of the cemetery, perhaps other parts aren't as safe as where we are now. Agree. Agree. Dude, I've never had like an investigation like this on these, on, on, on any electronic device this is just it's insane interesting them running side by side well how they're linking up and guys we're recording we're screen recording this entire session and the actual spirit talker app it records the entire session internally in the app so all the like answers everything it's all logged children here children here i think what we know about this area in particular is that we're dealing with children's spirits and you gotta understand that some of these guys, like some of these kids were, like they might have only been 16, 17, 18 at the time. So one was 11. Well, because you, got, you gotta think too, they didn't know what mental was back then. You might have just been. Well, it's, okay, well think think about it. If, if you're physically ill, like, if you physically hurt yourself, you know because you're feeling pain or whatever. Yeah. But if you have a mental illness, you don't know. You only know yeah. what other people are telling you. You think everything is fine. Exactly. So, so the thing they is, wouldn't even life. understand. Wife. They wouldn't even understand. Well, that's it. At all. Like, they, they, they wouldn't be able to comprehend it because they would think that they were yeah. okay, they were fine. That's why they think they were still kids because there was ages that, like Brennan mentioned earlier, that 11 years old and under... Yeah, there's a plaque you know, right there. Maybe even them. kids that were born into the asylum. Yeah. They might have went there with their mother that was pregnant, gave birth, and the doctor said, well, she's, you know... Yeah, let's see now. Insane. The kid's got to be insane. Yeah. These were dark times, people. Like, wasn't back, like docs or like no. child protection back then. It was... Back then, we're talking about a time where, you know, it it, it wasn't like now. It was dark and it was, it was hard. So we understand the troubles that people went through and... The way called mental asylum saw a lot of people through its doors before it closed down. Absolutely. Absolutely agrees with you on what you're saying. It agrees with what we're saying. Like, maybe Stacy was saying, "Yeah, hey, I agree, absolutely." And but you know what's passage. you know what's really weird now? Ever since it's saying that you're safe here, do you almost like call me crazy? But do you feel like there's been like an energy lifted? The air's not as thick. I'm not sure yeah, I'm like it. it feels cooler. Yeah. It feels almost like I'm more comfortable. Yeah. Before, when I felt on edge, at the moment I feel more or less like, not as far to say I'm sitting in my living room, but I feel like... I don't feel like I'm sitting in the middle of a cemetery. I feel confident. You know? You know? It doesn't scare me as much being here. No. And I think it could be a way of these spirits even... Well, malevolent energy, spirits you know? draw energy off fear. Yeah. And when you're scared, when you give into that fear they only grow stronger yeah. so with these spirits children who might have, who might be protecting us for all we know and saying don't be scared we got you maybe they're forming a ring like maybe they're around us look that was going off as i was saying it the emf was literally going off as i was saying it. like what if they're surrounding us yeah and what if they're saying like there's no need to be scared we got like, you relax yeah like you're okay here like they might have been not nasty we're not nasty these these kids were kids when they died, but they've been here for so long. They're adults. Yeah. They've grown up. 
This is their castle, like what they were saying earlier. Explosion. It makes sense. Explosion of energy. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Maybe like I'm I'm getting excited here, but for it, a second there I was like, ah. genuinely it is. Like I don't feel that heavy negative energy that I felt when we got here. Yeah, it's. It, it, I feel a lot more at ease and relaxed comfortable. And like you know, kind of like the weight, the weight, weight lifted off the shoulder kind of thing. I'm just blown away with this. We've 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 never and and you can go back from day one our videos. Maybe we're looking at the wrong lights. Maybe it's the actual lights up there. Oh, I been looking the semi. At. All the, yeah, that's I a good been point. Looking at those. I feel like there was more on earlier. We've never been a big fan of electronic devices, but that's pretty, you, you can't. It's actually pretty creepy because you've just been talking about them, like literally explaining yeah. what they're doing and like. I like the toys. It likes the toys. Oh, it right, likes right. all the toys around us. But have we discovered enough about these spirits? I'm still curious as to why they're here. That's what we have to find out. Like, I'm curious as to what, what's making them, you know, linger and what, what, why they're stuck here. Why they're not passing onto the... Uh... So if you heard what Brendan said, are you able to... Be able to maybe answer his question and let us know why you can't pass? Is there something stopping you? We've asked that other investigations is it because you're stuck in a loop that you're here reliving almost the moment you died over and over again window a window maybe because a window to the other world I don't know what do you reckon I don't know window maybe a window you know you know the living maybe, realm or maybe something. there's only a certain amount of time when they pass, that they can move on. Like, yeah, like they're not. And if well, they're not go, like, content, other, well, not just that, but also on, like otherwise, they'd be around twenty four seven. Nah. Nah. What about what about if the window means that when you pass, you have to be content with passing, and there's the window of opportunity to pass, oh, but yeah. if you're restless, it closes, leaving you stuck in that uh -huh. loop. So I'd like to know what's causing you to be stuck in that loop to not pass through that window of opportunity to go towards the light I'm, I'm 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 curious as to what's keeping you here if you could maybe explain i would appreciate that jail it's just saying like this place is it's jail well they were essentially in a jail yeah they were in a jail yeah, they were true. essentially locked up most of i them. can use my voice are you able to speak into one of these cameras for us? Go real quiet. Are you stuck in a loop? Are you here constantly replaying out the days? Perhaps before you passed or perhaps a traumatic experience or event that you haven't come to terms with yet? Is that why that you're is that why you're still here? Or as I said, is it impossible for you to move on because of how disturbed your graves were? How disturbed they were during the moving of them? And that perhaps now you just can't get comfortable, you can't go to you can't find any ease in it, and you're just here constantly uncomfortable and stuck in this place is that maybe why i think we give it a couple more minutes i was treated bad i was treated Neat. bad Neat. the way that these people were treated it makes sense like they weren't treated good you know it was horrible what happened to them Oh, yeah. Oh, and, yeah. Well, th th I mean, this is back in the peak of mental health when they thought, you know, shock yeah. therapy yeah. was the way to go, where they would electrocute your brain. Electroshock yeah. therapy. Yeah, it all happened there. Like, like, it, f like it, a modern day Saw movie. Yeah. You know, like it's, like, it's mental when you actually look into what actually went on there. So it makes me think back to that question. It's like they're stuck in a traumatic experience they haven't moved on from yet, and that is maybe what they're meaning by I feel pain medicine 
you know, they're asking for help, but little do they realize is that the only help, the only advice we can give you is to find peace within yourself, to let whatever angers you or whatever keeps you up, to let that around. go. They're around us. Well, they're listening, so keep going. Let go of any anger, let go of any resentment, let go of anything that ties you to this earth and move on. I'm sure there's family members and friends that would love to see you again who are waiting for you. And if you do... This is my home. If you do see the light, you go should... Go towards it. You should go towards it. Go towards it and let it embrace you and... This may be your home and has been for a long time, but... Yeah. You know, there's a better home for you. I think with that said, we call it. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. I'm going to end it. Just want to say thank you for communicating with us, for coming out and having a chat and shedding some light and, you know, introducing yourselves to us. You thank know, you for letting us feel safe. Yeah. You know? yeah, we, yeah, we really appreciate that. We came very... Comfortable. Know, well, we started off very, yep. you know, uncomfortable and we feel, you know, at home with you. So yes. we... We really do appreciate it. It's almost you. like they sit at the end, our home. Yeah. It's like they welcome us into their home. Right. You know? Is there any last message you would like to say to us before I stop this? This would be your last chance to be able to say something through this device. With that said, thank you. And as we mentioned, if you see a light, go to it. Let it embrace you and let go of anything that ties you to this earth and move on. If you have that opportunity, you should take it. Yeah.